Join us now here in the studio in New York, White House Press Secretary, Corrine Jean-Pierre. Corrine, good morning. It's good Thank to see you. Thank you so much, Willie. Thanks for having me. So take us, if you will, to Camp David this morning, where <laughs> President Biden has been for the last several days and will be for a couple of more ahead of Thursday night's debate in Atlanta. What does the prep look like? Yeah. How is he preparing? So look, I'm going to be really mindful. I have, to, I can't break the hatch act from here. As you know, when there is an opportunity for this president to speak to millions of Americans, he shows up and he meets the moment. So obviously the president's going to look forward to Thursday doing just that, laying out uh, what he normally does, what he's done the last three and a half, half years, how he's going to continue to build on the economy. We're talking about uh, historic numbers in, in creating jobs, low, uh, low unemployment rate, and for not forgetting that we can't leave communities that have been normally left behind, behind, right? He wants to make sure we build an economy for all. And there's a contrast there. We have on the other side, we have congressional Republicans, we have extreme Republicans who want to give tax breaks to billionaires, give tax breaks to corporation. That's what they want to continue to do. Let's not forget, they continue to talk about cutting Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. That's not what the president our president wants to do. He wants to expand health care. And last, just, just yesterday, we talked about Dobbs' decision and how the Dobbs' decision took away, ripped away fundamental rights, fundamental rights for women across the country. The president is going to continue to fight uh, for those rights. And you heard directly, obviously, on the show uh, interview with Mika, uh, with the vice president, and she laid that out in a way that uh, is really true to where we are as an administration and what we've been saying for the past two years. If former President Trump can talk policy on Thursday, which remains an open mm -hmm. question, we'll see what kind of performer he is that night. One of the places he's undoubtedly going to go is to inflation which everybody across the country is feeling, despite all that economic data we talk about all the time that is so strong, that the economy's thriving. Talk about things costing too much. He'll look into the camera maybe and say, you know that your cereal costs too much. He'll go down the list yeah. of groceries and, and gas. How will the president address that criticism? So here's the thing. This is something that we've been talking about for some time, right? The economy. And you're right. The data shows that the economy is indeed strengthening. It's stronger. And we understand that we came out of a pandemic a pandemic, a once in a century pandemic. And the work that this president did with from the American Rescue Plan to the bipartisan infrastructure, infrastructure legislation to the Inflation Reduction Act, all of these historic pieces of legislation has helped this country get back on its feet. So yes, you know, eggs and milk and there were grocery things that were up it has gone down. It has gone down since 2022. Gas prices, because of the actions that this president took, and let's not forget there was an in invasion, but Russia did into it did obviously into Ukraine that caused gas prices to, to to tick up. The president took action, tapped the SPR, and we saw gas prices go down. The president has met the moment with every issue that we have had in front of us. The president obviously talks about that often. He's going to have another opportunity in, on Thursday to speak to those issues. And look, we're talking about Donald Trump, which I just mentioned the Dobbs decision. The reason why we have chaos right now after the Dobbs decision, the reason why after Roe v. Wade was overturned, overturned after it being constitutional law for 50 years, is because of what Donald Trump did in, uh, in his administration. And now IVF is on the line. Contraception is on the line. We have, I was thinking about when I was sitting here before starting this conversation, there's some of us who have young children. Can you believe that we have more rights, we had more rights growing up than our kids, than our kids? That's because of the Trump administration and what they were able to do. So there's a lot, there's a lot here. There's a big contrast in what we're trying to do on behalf of the American people, majority of Americans, what they want to see, and what we see congressional Republicans, extreme Republicans doing. So something that shadows this campaign and Thursday night is the war in Gaza. Um, and just we know that it has caught per polling cost the president some support among young voters. We also know just in the last couple of days, Prime Minister Netanyahu has flip-flopped on whether or not he'll accept the ceasefire a deal that the president uh, outlined a few weeks ago. In, in light of all that, with his, does the president right now have confidence in Prime Minister Netanyahu's conduct in this war? Here's what I can say, is that our private conversations that we have had with the Israeli government, has said, they've said to us very clearly that they continue to support the hostage deal. That's what we know. Um, and we also know, as I've said many times, is that the president and the prime minister have had a decades long relationship. And because of that relationship, because of that friendship, they're able to have tough and honest conversations. And that is important too. The president is committed. 
He is committed to getting this hostage deal. Let's not forget what that brings us. A stop to this war, an end to this war, a ceasefire, making sure those hostages get home to their family and their friends and continuing that humanitarian aid, increasing that humanitarian aid into Gaza. And that is our focus day in and day out, the president and his uh, and his team at the administration, obviously. That that leads me to uh, the, the, you mentioned Hack Act. The, the, Hatch it Act. leads, Hatch Act. Yeah. It, it, it leads me to the, the complexity that you and others have to go through. And I saw it uh, relatively close uh, during the Obama yeah. 12 is where you have to govern and deal with the outside campaign at the same time. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think that what people don't understand is you, the president has to deal with Thursday night, but anything could happen in Israel or Haiti yeah. or Sudan, and he has to deal with that at the same time. Is it important for people to understand that we have to have a president that has a staff with him that can handle yeah. not only their plans, but the unexpected? And that you need someone that has the temperament and the balance yes. to be able to deal with that because you can't predict from one minute to the next what may happen that you have to deal with. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. Look, the president is the president wherever he is. And look, if you think about this president, 36 years as senator, eight years as vice president, he came to this space to be president, obviously, first day of office, ready to lead. And you saw that. Normandy was a perfect example, leading on the global stage. When you think about what's happening in, in Ukraine because of Russia's aggression, leading on the, on the global stage, bringing in NATO. NATO is stronger than it's ever been before because of this president's experience and being able to lead. When you think about the economy, as Willie was asking me, what we coming, coming out of the, of, of the pandemic, what we saw with the economy, economy. This president led and met the moment. You think about the Dobbs decision that just happened. Again, this president led, met and led this moment. And it is about him. It is not about it is not about him. It is about the American people. It is not about what po political you know, grievances he may have. It's not about uh, trying to get back a people. It's about making sure that he stands with majority of Americans and not even majority of Americans, all of Americans. The president has said consistently he is a president for Americans in red states and in blue state. It does not matter. He will meet the moment and deliver what is truly needed and what they want to see in order, in order to make sure that we have a fair and just nation. Corrine, since the overturn of Roe, it's been a scary time for women and their health care and access to basic health care. What has Biden done to ensure that women can have access to life-saving medical care in a timely fashion separate of Congress, what has he done to help protect our right to basic medical treatment. Yeah, and let me just say, and we've been uh, highlighting these stories because there are women out there who have survived the abortion bans, which is awful to say. There's this one woman, Caitlin Joshua. She lives in Southeast Louisiana, resident there. Her, She and her husband have a daughter and a son. In 2022, she went through a miscarriage. She went to two hospitals. Because of the extreme abortion bans in Louisiana, she was turned away. And she was dealing with pain and heavy bleeding and they would not treat her. She had to go home to deal with the miscarriage and they were worried about her life. These are the stories that you hear over and over again. We're talking about 21 states that now have this extreme abortion ban. It affects 27 million women who are of reproductive health care age in those states. And so the president has said, you heard from the vice president directly yesterday as well, we are going to continue to fight for these women. And it's not just that, the chaos continues. IVF, contraception. And so the president is doing everything that he can to protect IVF, to protect contraception. And he has signed three executive orders since the last two years. And you see, you see the work that DOJ is doing. You see the work that HHS is doing in protecting those rights from the federal level. But at the end of the day, we have to see Roe uh, become law of the land. Congress has to act. And what we're seeing from Congress, re Republicans in Congress right now, is three national bans. That's what they want to do. All of this, abortion, the economy, immigration, the war in Gaza, on the menu Thursday night at the debate in Atlanta. White House Press Secretary Corrine Jean-Pierre, thanks for being here. Thank Appreciate you so much, it. Willie. Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more September 7th in Brooklyn 
MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.